I wanted to show a couple things to me. Um, some of the things you start talking about the higher level things, the overall length, the 131 feet, 113 feet wide. You can read about all that stuff. Certainly the the shoes themselves, 2,200 pounds. Think, you know, to me when you start talking about that 6.6 .6 million pounds, 57 shoes per belt, eight belts, 456 total. Yeah, you know, you're over a million pounds just in shoes, mm -hmm. collar shoes. So where the rubber meets the road, if you will. Um, actually, the low alloy steel meets the road in this case. So, uh, one of the things that we had to do from the original, from the Apollo and the shuttle, was to actually do the upgrades to this thing. And I kind of get in the weeds on this, so if you guys, uh, okay. if it goes crazy, then you can check that out, right? But um, we had to increase the carrying capacity from 12 million to 18 million pounds. So, how do you do that? You know, so we increased it. See all these traction roller assemblies. We increase the bearing capacity, the size on those things. These are much larger than, than the originals. Actually went through, rebuilt the, the gearboxes themselves. Uh, this would be the sprocket shaft assembly. This represents another fourth intermediate. And then the first intermediate is, is above 168 to 1 gear ratio. So we went back and um, actually took these line board, welded, and with a laser tracker back in the day, they didn't have anything like that to actually line them up. So we found these things out. Um, this is called like the hook board, uh, you know, technical terms, and, and out in the industry. And um, they're about 40 and 50 thousandths out. So we actually had to rebuild those things, weld them back up, and trude them up with a laser tracker. So to be honest with you, it's kind of better than new now at this point, yeah. you know, with all the new bearings and whatnot. So materials wise, welding wise, um, you know, weldings. Uh, the industry's you know caught up since the 60s mm -hmm. so um, there's some improvements that were made there we took some stiffeners inside the trucks themselves and I can take some of that as well you pick up the load it's always trying to transfer kind of reminds you of a ship doesn't it yeah right with those ports so inside of these things we actually um, and it's hard difficult to see here but we put some stiffeners in there in critical areas based on our analysis for the load itself. So a lot of preparation for this uprate load. Yeah. It doesn't come without uh, modification and out without cost. So that was a big effort from a system engineering standpoint, making sure that uh, we're trying to not only perform our maintenance, but um, be proactive is our big thing. Mm -hmm. You know, looking ahead at, at you know, wear and tear got to be able to look into the future what we're going to be doing mm -hmm. uh, mileage on the shoes you know the different things that are wear items are, are a big issue redundancy um, a lot of times it's cheaper to run to failure but uh, as they say in the space business right failure is not an option mm -hmm. when you've got that this uh, vehicle 4.1 billion dollar vehicle mm -hmm. on, on top of you you don't want to you don't want to stop for anything and mm -hmm. on the way out we didn't so it was a great trip we've got over 200 subsystems in this thing so there's a lot of potential, right, for failure and for, you know, events to happen, yeah. right, for issues to occur. So the, really the, the um, you see some of the guys out here working right now, the, the, the maintenance crew that, that's doing the task right now and actually performing the work right now, those are the ones that are really, to me, the heroes, right? They do their job right, the rest of the system works pretty great. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like it's a combination. You 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 were due for upgrades on the machine, but sure. you also had the biggest rocket you hauled in many many generations right. here. Right. So right. Th those things needed to come together when mm -hmm. you when you upgraded this vehicle. They did. They did. And even looking into the future, you know, for this mm -hmm. thing. So we actually did um, some proof loading, if you will, uh, not only for the crawler but conditioning the crawler way to make sure that we weren't going to have any issues uh, along the way as you're trying to compress that ground. Right. And um, it's a, uh, so we actually, uh, uh, our, our heaviest weight we use was 25.5 MIPS to carry up and down, and even up on the pad and back. Mm -hmm. So with the vehicle we've got right now, we were looking at about 20, 21.6. Uh, so much lighter than we actually uh, have proof loaded to. So mm -hmm. that's how you want things to be. So the, the crawler responded well, handled it very well. That's your Super Bowl, the day you haul it out. Kind of is, kind of is. It's, yeah, you got to prepare for that and then that moment arrives, right? You, you know, Keith, one of the biggest things, too, was um, for me, I've seen a, a lot of this stuff before, but some of the younger engineers, this is the first time they saw it, to see the excitement in their mm -hmm. in their faces and to be a part of that was probably the coolest thing ever. You yeah. know? So uh, knowing that, hey, this stuff that I'm doing has purpose, it has mm -hmm. meaning, and 
you know, no matter what you're doing, it has meaning. But when we're actually, and I'm talking about the maintenance side of it, you know, we start doing the maintenance, there's a reason that we're doing this. Mm -hmm. There's a reason we're really paying attention to detail when we're doing our truck alignments on these things to make sure that we're tracking true with that way. Because you start getting into a corner, it's imperative that, you know, the trucks are, you know, in sync. Mm -hmm. The best thing and probably the neatest thing, everybody talks about how fast a crawler uh, runs. And, um, I always like to say that's classified, you know, just to have fun with it. But uh, we have a constraint of uh, 0.82 miles an hour that, that while we're rolling. But to me, the big thing, when we rolled up onto the pad, the, the big thing, and I don't have my phone with me, but uh, the big thing, when we got to the top of the pad, we have a requirement to be within three quarters of an inch. So what happens is the front relative to the back. So imagine trying to do that with your vehicle, right? Yeah. Now this thing, uh, the cabs go independent of one another so we can make sure that we line up and hit our marks. We were within an eighth of an inch. Our instrumentation, our laser our laser guidance system that we use, but you know, the, the, the engineers are driving this thing, right? So mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of pride in doing that yeah. as well, so. How is it, from, from your knowledge, how is it different now, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. with laser guidance and, and other well, technology that might not have been available in the Apollo days when they were Rolling so, these things. so now keep in mind that's only when we get to the pad when we're actually or you know, docking the rest of the time we're just driving so it's mm -hmm. kind of the same you know so it's the same so uh, a little interesting fact you don't read about uh, I guess you know the crawler is able to make I don't guess the crawler is able to make a six degree turn but I I'm assuming that the civil engineer who laid out the crawler way said oh it can make a six degree turn everything's a six degree turn so <laughs> I'm thinking we got all this real estate. Why <laughs> and yeah. are we doing that? So you can imagine it's kind of like navigating a ship. If I want to make a turn, I better start, you know, making right. that turn, you know, before I get there. So there's a lot of experience that goes into to place there. So yeah. it's a lot of fun. How, how big is the crew that's in, in actual operating the vehicle while you're bringing the rocket out? So there's there's approximately 30 to 35 um, folks involved in that, depending on the location. When we start docking, there's more people involved because you have to have non observers and whatnot, uh, people that are watching interfaces as we, the tolerances are tight, you know, mm -hmm. going into the BEV, it's tight. So um, we've got a um, some lines and obstructions that we are within almost an inch of, just a little more than an inch. So we have to really, as we're, as we're coming in there, we make sure we've got a bunch of eyes on things. Going down the crawler way, not much obstruction, right? So you don't need as many people, so. Yeah. What, what are the kind of things you're looking for from a process standpoint as you're going through uh, bringing the rocket out? There has to be a lot of troubleshooting along the way to make sure you're getting ahead of problems, right? Um, what, what kind of things are you looking for that might be a concern as you're, as you're on the trip? So as you're on the trip, we're monitoring. Um, you can see I'm, uh, I've got something over here that uh, I'm actually monitoring pressures. Mm -hmm. These injectors, these grease injectors, I'm uh, monitoring. We got these thermocouples. We've actually got one on the inside. We've got four per, per traction of roller assembly. So one of the things we're looking at with the, the grease that we, act, we are using, uh, we really don't see any difference in temperature, even with a load, believe it or not. Um, is The only difference we see is whether the sun shines on the one side or the other. Mm. One of our guys, I'm very, very proud of him for uh, actually coming up with a pretty innovative design that's out there in industry, and that's uh, these, these radiators. We're actually able to pull these out by hand. So we never have to change this thing out. If we have anything that's damaged or needs repair, simply push them up and pull them out. It takes five PSI uh, to actually keep these things in place, and um, we've had no leaks or no issues. We've uh, increased our cooling capacity by over 75%. This thing it has to take a lot to keep something this size cool, absolutely, even around absolutely. at that speed, absolutely. Yeah. And, um, you know, these for our coming set of generators, um, they actually, you know, for us, the demand is there's always demand for power, so mm -hmm. uh, being able to keep that, that engine cool is imperative. The gasoline, you got the same thing on the other end, so 5,000 gallons, and um. We go by gallons per mile, not uh, not miles per gallon <laughs> yeah. here. So it's 125.7 gallons per mile. Fuel efficiency, not necessarily so, your goal so, there. So. Yeah, the whistle is not what makes the train move. See what I was telling you? Six degree turn. What we do is, uh, so you can see, like I was, ta I was telling you, this thing's capable of doing a six degree turn. You thought the steering wheel would be larger, perhaps. Yeah. That's not a gas pedal. 
down there. That's the brake. <laughs> so here's our laser uh, mm -hmm. guidance system. Once we get to the to the pad, and we're docking, that's when we use that. Other than that, when we're out here driving, that's not something we do. Mm -hmm. You know. So um, here's our speed control. This is actually our throttle, if you will. We're capable of once we get to the pad. One of the things we do, we're typically in great circle. In other words, if you're looking the front of this truck, so these these trucks are turning to your left. The rear would be turning to the right, so it makes the circle. Mm -hmm. And once we get to the pad, we go into independent mode, and then the trucks are able to steer independent of one another, so we get that precise alignment. Anyway, for um, for us to be able to to get this vehicle and the launch vehicle within an eighth of an inch of our desired uh, Mark is phenomenal. So here's the outcomes. These are these these are just like old um, uh, train engines. There are 16 cylinders in these each. Obviously, massive pistons. That's what gives us our torque. Especially uh, going up the grade as you go up to the pad and you get a chance to see that 5% grade. Uh, it's impressive to. To know that we're yeah. actually you know, yeah. carrying that vehicle up there. And a lot more stress, yeah. And it's, that, that takes a minute. So, a lot of maintenance here uh, with regard to number of hours. Uh, again, these things have to be in tip top shape. We need both engines, we have redundancy. You can drive on one engine, one set of engines, but we need to propel up the slope and down the slope with, with both engines working at the same time. The testing is necessary though, so we get it on our end, our support end. We want to make sure that our end is kind of seamless, you know, it's just, it's just a matter of uh, transportation to and from the VAB to the launch pad. Kind of like calling an Uber for, for something, right? <laughs> <You know? laughs> but on a little larger scale.